Hello, everybody. Amen. We're really glad you're here tonight. We're going to be starting here in about seven minutes or so, but we need people to start getting to their seats so we can see where their seats so people can find some place to sit. So if you can, really appreciate if you can do that. Amen. We're going to be getting started in about three more minutes. Hallelujah. So if we can, those that are testifying tonight, if they can begin to make their way up on stage, amen. We got a couple of seats for you guys. We're going to be getting started in about another three minutes. Amen. If we can all make our way to the sanctuary this evening, we're going to get our services started. Hallelujah. We're going to establish the presence of our Lord and Savior in this place tonight. Amen. If you guys could stand to your feet, hallelujah. We're going to sing some songs of praise and worship. We're going to sing that song, He Set Me Free. Hallelujah. 
chains are broken because you have spoken it is finished at the cross now i'm living in your freedom jesus you have set me free and nothing's gonna hold me back no nothing's gonna keep me down jesus has set me free i am free indeed i will give you praise with everything i am i'll praise whatever may come my way you have won the victory you set me free i'll give you who praise with everything i am i'll praise whatever may come my way you have won the victory you set me free amen by his power this evening and by the power of your spirit every captive is released for this purpose I am living, cause Jesus, you have set me free. And nothing's gonna hold me back, and nothing's gonna keep me down. Jesus has set me free, I am free indeed. I will give you who praise with everything I am. I'll praise whatever may come my way. You have won the victory. You set me free, I'll give you who praise with everything I am. I'll praise whatever may come my way. You have won the victory. You set me free. Hallelujah. I am surrounded by and I am surrounded by your goodness. I am covered by your grace. My heart is grateful, forever thankful. Jesus, you have set me free. And nothing's gonna hold me back. No, nothing's gonna keep me down. Jesus has set me free. I am free indeed. I will give you praise with everything I am. Whatever may come my way, you have won the victory. You set me free, I'll give you who pray with everything I am. I'll pray whatever may come my way, you have won the victory. You set me free, I'll give you who pray with everything I am. I'll pray whatever may come my way you have won the victory you set me free you set me free amen hallelujah we're going to continue praising this evening as we sing that song uh, you are the first and the last hallelujah First and the last, beginning and the end, the promise of wonders to come, the future is in your hands. Caught in the light, with all the earth we will sing. Got our hope and our salvation, worthy of all the praise. Oh, how many know he is the author of life tonight, church? Let's sing that out as we praise our Lord and Savior. You are the author of life. Our freedom is in your name. Embracing the cross meant for us and brought us to life again. Caught in the life with all we are, let us sing. Oh, 
are singing, you are the first and the last again this evening. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices to the heavens. You are the first and the last, beginning and the end. The promise of wonders to come. The future is in your hands. Caught in the light, with all the earth we will sing. God, our hope and our salvation, worthy of all the praise, be our light everlasting. Great is your name, Jesus, the first and the last. And every heart in every nation will hear the sound. salvation worthy of all the praise be our light everlasting great is your name Jesus the first and the last oh every heart hallelujah every heart in every nation will hear the sound as your light breaks through the darkness and your name rings out. Every distant horizon will meet as one. Singing, holy is your name. Holy is your name. God, our hope and our salvation, worthy of all the praise, be our life. Hallelujah. We're going to enter an attitude of worship this evening. Hallelujah. Help us sing that song, God, we believe for it. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe There is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what. There is power in your name. So much power in your God, we believe. 
Oh, let's give God praise. Oh, Lord God. Lord, Oh, praise God. Amen. It's good to be in Harvesters tonight. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody out tonight. Really glad you're able to come and uh, be a part uh, as uh, this is our 12th annual Harvesters already. Hallelujah. And so it's just, just really, really good. Amen. And again, I apologize our air conditioners, we bought more fans, and we'll try to get more fans tomorrow. Amen. And so, and pray that you, you can you can handle it, endure it. Amen. Uh, so that would be really well. Hallelujah. Other than that, uh, we want to open in prayer tonight. Believe God to really help us and work on some needs that we have. We want to pray, uh, first of all, for Brittany, uh, for salvation. We want to pray for healing for uh, Abraham. Uh, had uh, some tests that his test, test results will come back very good. Uh, we want to pray for him. Matt Solis wants to pray that his speech would be better. So we're going to believe for a miracle for our brother. We want to pray for Lupe Diaz. Also had some medical tests. Praying that they'll come back favorable as well. I want to lift up uh, Linda Villarreal. Uh, for favor, amen, with an apartment that God will just move on her behalf in that. Also want to pray, for, it says for Daniel and Candy, uh, favor in court that God will just move on their behalf as well. And we also want to remember quick recovery for my grandson, Nico, from his surgery, for uh, Gloria Thomas from her surgery. She sent me, uh, sent us a text that uh, went, had her, uh, uh, her checkup and the doctor says she's doing really well. So we want to, con- uh, she's thanking everyone for praying. We want to pray, continue to pray for her in that. And of course, Maria Redondo, for God to heal her. Amen from what's attacking her lungs. So we want to believe God for a complete miracle for her as well. How many tonight, you have a special need or request, you to lift your hand. Say, I've got a need I want to need to bring before the throne of God. We have many needs on the screen, our leadership, our many ministries, our government, our president, all our pioneer works that we have out in the field. Uh, we pray for them. We have missionaries that we pray for every week, always praying for some different missionaries that we have, and we're believing God for these and, and that God will just move in that. We have a focused 
fire this week, amen, that we're praying specifically, amen, for this Harvesters Conference, uh, that God will just help us and just move in a powerful way during these next days of preaching and, and what God is going to help us, amen. Other than that, we're going to lay a hold of God. Uh, we're going to ask God to move upon these needs we mentioned, your unspoken needs, and we're going to pray Get a hold of God, amen. God is going to help us tonight. Let's start off this uh, conference, amen, with prayer tonight, amen. My brother Richie is going to open us in prayer tonight. Let's pray, church. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before your throne right now, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God. Move on our behalf, Lord God. Uh... Heavenly Father, we come before your throne tonight by the power and the blood of Jesus, God. Uh, Lord, we take dominion and authority right now, God, over the spirit of infirmity right now, God. Uh, and I speak resurrection, life, and power, God, upon those of needing healing in their physical bodies right now, God. We pray, God, uh, for unsaved family members, God. We pray, God, uh, for supernatural finances, God, to each and every church, God, uh, and families that are represented here this evening, God. God, uh, Lord, we thank you, God, for everything that you are going to do, God, in this conference, God. Uh, we're believing you, God, that we will see results, God, of you moving, God, uh, upon each and every need that has been brought before your throne tonight, God. Uh, and, God, you alone are going to be glorified and praised, God. And we give you all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. It's as we take our seats, amen, if you like greeting, amen, greet the person next to you, hallelujah, and that would be really good, and, and just uh, already Wednesday night and, and already packed out, amen, it, that's a good sign, God's helping us, God's moving on our behalf, glory to God. We want to, again, uh, uh, we want to just bring greetings amen and welcome everyone out to the potter's house christian church we are in our 12th annual uh, uh harvesters homecoming conference uh, we do this amen that god will uh, uh that you know we can able to bring back our pastors and their uh, people from their church the delegates as they come and they they can come and get refreshed it's it's like a family reunion Glory to God, and having our kids come, and we're all able to come and, and refresh relationships, uh, just do, amen, God, to be able to help us in doing all those things. So we really, really looking forward to this, everyone uh, in our church, looking, really looking forward to this, uh, that, that, man, we're just excited about that. Glory to God. Other than that, amen, I uh, want to... Um, give some announcements just to remember if you can remember some of these things uh, and uh, in that uh, first of all amen if you're a, a delegate and you're in a hotel room uh, just a couple of things uh, if there's any problems any issues uh, uh, the, especially specifically if you can speak to v Vanessa She'll help you out. She she's always does a really great job for us. If there's any problems, uh, please let me know, and we can correct those things. Please don't get crunk with the staff there. Amen. Okay, I know, amen, we got rights, and we're going to get it. No, amen. Please take care of them. We have to do business with them all year round. And so if there are any issues, please uh, get with me, uh, and, and we'll work those things out. Uh, and just be nice to them. We really would appreciate that. If you're uh, going to buy goodies and stuff, you don't buy them and put them on the room. Amen. That's on your dime. And so uh, uh, so please remember that as well. And if you're a delegate, amen, you're a sponsored delegate, we ask you to be in every seminar and in every uh, uh, prayer meeting, amen, before service, uh, before uh, 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 we do that in the mornings, uh, our doors will be open by 8 o'clock, uh, so you have some time to pray before the service uh, starts at 9 o'clock, and so we really uh, uh, encourage you to be a part of that, and so please uh, take note of that, uh, uh, in that the evening services start at 7, the doors will be open, uh, uh, by six o'clock 
We do have some parking along the back here. We have this door uh, that we're able to come in so you don't have to walk all the way around. Uh, and so, uh, but we close that door, amen. So uh, if you come after seven, then you're going to have to walk all the way around, amen. And so if you can, uh, please uh, help those that are ushering, those that are in the parking lot directions in doing those things so everything can run smoothly. Our parking lot is over amped, amen, especially with the boxing and the uh, 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 jiu-jitsu. Uh, they, they end up taking about 20, 30 spots sometimes, and we're hoping we get here before they get here. And uh, but uh, there is some parking along the back here, and that would be appreciative if you're able to carpool. I know some families, amen, everybody wants to come in their own car. If you can carpool and come together, that would be great, and that, that would be more room for parking in doing that. So, if you can do that, we would really appreciate. Other than that, amen, uh, I think that's all the announcements that I have. We have some reports we want to hear from these men tonight uh, as they would come and, uh, and, and, and just share it. We're going to have Pastor Roger Sanchez, Pastor Camilo Perez, and also Luis, Pastor Luis Perez, amen, going to come and uh, give us a report, amen, tonight. Praise God. My name is Roger Sanchez, my wife Celia, amen, and my two children. We pastor in the Fort Sam Austin Highway area, hallelujah. Uh, we've been out there, amen, uh, quite some time. I believe this year is going to be 10 years. Uh, but amen, uh, God is uh, graciously helping me and my wife stay sane. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to God, amen. Uh, this year, amen, we've kind of been rebuilding. Uh, God's been helping us. We've seen some backsliders come in. Uh, uh, we've seen some just different visitors come in. Uh, uh, amen. Some crazy people. Uh, amen. We pray for them. Hallelujah. Uh, but uh, we've just been blessed to have uh, some sister churches help us. We want to thank the Laredo Church, Pastor George, uh, New Braunfels, amen. Pastor Daniel blessed us with the revival uh, in May. Uh, and just want to thank the Mother Church, amen, for your continual support and always coming and helping uh, when we ask. Uh, there's no question. You come. You bless, you labor, hallelujah, and we thank you for that. Uh, continue to pray for us there in Austin Highway area that God would continue to give us breakthrough and God would help us, hallelujah. My name is uh, Camilo Perez. Me and my beautiful, amazing wife, Lulu, and our two kids, Adam and Alyssa, I pioneering in the wonderful city of Live Oak, Texas, amen. And so God has really been helping us. Since we left Harvesters last year, we had a revival with Pastor Willis Gordon in September. It was a powerful revival. We saw uh, visitors come out. We saw people come in and get saved. We had three people filled with the Holy Ghost on the last day of revival. It was powerful. We had some of those visitors locked in. Uh, immediately after that revival, we had a couple that has been coming to our church since we opened. They wanted to serve in the church. They joined ministry right at about the six months and one week of being open. We had a couple wanting to preach the gospel, amen. And so they've been helping us. They've been faithful, involved in music ministry. Uh, Brother Glad, preached, he preached a healing crusade in December. I mean, it was powerful. We saw a visitor come out and get saved. He gave his life to Jesus. It was an awesome time, amen. In May, we had a revival uh, with Pastor Roger Gamboa. It was amazing revival. We had words spoken. We had some visitors that came out through this revival. It's been an awesome time there in Live Oak. God has really been helping us. We've been seeing visitors come in. We've been seeing people lock in. You know, God has just really been, it's amazing to me to see what God will do. If people would just be faithful and stand up and answer the call, what God is asking them to do. Listen, God does the, does the work through his people. What we have been seeing has been seeing God's faithful hand working in our city. Amen. Last month, we sent our first teenager to boot camp. Amen. It was my son. And so God really touched him. He came back, had a powerful, powerful uh, uh, testimony to see what God did in his life. Through his, uh, through his boot camp, he came back doing push-ups in the house every day. I said, sir, you're not a boot camp no more. Get up. It's okay. 
God really helped them through that boot camp. Amen. Two weeks ago, we had a baptism fellowship. We saw three people uh, get baptized. We had an awesome, awesome time. God has really been helping us there in Live Oak. Please continue to pray for us as we pray for you. I want to thank my pastor, Pastor Luis, and his wife, Naomi Perez, for their faithfulness, their exampleship, for discipling us, for putting up with us. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Ben and Miss Peggy for their wonderful, wonderful leadership in this wonderful conference. Please continue to pray for us in Live Oak. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. My name is Luis Perez, me and my uh, beautiful, awesome wife, Naomi, and my kids, amen, Nico, uh, Liam, and Danica, and my other kids. I have another son. Uh, his name is Diego, amen, and then my other son, Casey, you know, and so we're pastoring there in Universal City, amen. God's been helping us, amen. God's uh, been doing great works, amen. We just finished a uh, building project with uh, Alex and his church, amen, and um God's helping them. Uh, we're just very encouraged, amen. Uh, God's been uh, moving in our church, amen. We have, uh, you know, we've been blessed, amen. We've never had a shortage of men and couples and disciples, amen. And um, God's just doing a powerful work, amen, uh, in, our, in our disciples, young men rising up, amen, wanting to preach, amen, wanting to get married, amen, but, uh, uh, you know, believing God for them, but just doing great things for God, amen. And uh, we're working right now on, on getting everything established to launch our, our next churches, amen. And, um, uh, you know, I just want to say this real quick. Uh, you know, uh, the, these, these next three churches that we're going to launch, uh, these are all couples that are going to be coming out of the parole ministry. And, and I want to tell you something. God can reach anybody. And uh, uh, when these couples, these men came in the church, amen, they were uh, out there somewhere. You know what I mean? And, uh, but God's gotten a hold of them, amen. They, they're married. They're uh, doing great things for God, amen. And God willing, our next church uh, that we plant, amen, is going to be our first uh, uh, convert out of the parole ministry, amen. We're very excited about that, amen. And uh, so continue to pray for us, amen. Continue to believe God uh, for our church, amen. And uh, we're just excited about what God is doing, amen, what God is doing in our baby churches, amen. And we're just looking forward to everything God will do uh, in the future, amen. So I want to thank my pastor. Ben Rodriguez, amen, his wife, Miss Peggy, amen, just all their investment, all their help, amen, uh, everything they've done for us, amen, I, I, I just couldn't, can't imagine where I'd be today if it wasn't for my pastor, uh, just really, really uh, having a heart uh, for someone like me, amen, that came in the church, amen, just messed up, amen, and just having the patience to work with someone like me, amen, and just to see what God has done, amen, I just want to thank him, amen, this mother church, our mother church, my mother church, amen, just for uh, their support, amen, and just being there for us, amen, throughout the years, amen, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I've said it before, amen, uh, uh, you know, pa um, uh, Mr. Rudy, amen, Sanchez, amen, played a big part uh, in my uh, upbringing, amen, as a, as a disciple, amen, just very grateful to be here tonight, amen, uh, thank you for everything you do, amen. Praise God. Tremendous reports. Glory to God. We always, always good to hear, amen, what God's doing in our churches. Glory to God. Want to receive the offering tonight. As we receive the offering, um, it uh, just struck me a little bit in uh, another offering in the Old Testament. And uh, this was uh, when Moses was sent to Egypt. And uh, we know the story, the plagues and all the things that are going on. And God brought a great deliverance. And uh, Israel is coming out of the land of Egypt. But before they left the land of Egypt, in uh, Exodus 11, verse 2, it says, Now speak in the years of the people. And let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And then in Exodus 25, verse 2, it says, Now speak unto the children of Israel. Well, I'll wait on that one in a second here. But what it is, uh, is here was Israel 400 years. They were in slavery. 400 years they've been laboring uh, building, doing all whatever the uh, Pharaoh had wanted them to do. And here's God. God keeps good books. 
in the sense of uh, uh, he, as they labored and they did all of these things, uh, uh, what happened is that uh, as they're leaving, God tells them, I want you to go to the Egyptians and I want you to collect your paycheck now that you're leaving. God, we know when you're leaving a job, you collect your final paycheck. And these folks, it says here, they got silver, they got gold, uh, they were blessed, they left very blessed. But there is a purpose for that. It was not just uh, for the supporting of their families, uh, for them to do things, amen, to buy a new car and stuff like that. Yes, they're able to do those things and nice things, uh, but there was also another purpose that God had. We know that God brought them as soon as he... They went through the Red Sea. They went into uh, uh, the wilderness there. They came to Mount Sinai. God gave them the Ten Commandments. As God gave them the Ten Commandments, uh, and then he gave them the pattern of building the tabernacle, God's church, where God is going to dwell. He gave him the instructions, and then he told Moses, uh, I want you to take an offering. Because this is what's going to finance and take care of uh, building the house of God. And this is where he said in uh, uh, Exodus 25, verse 2, Speak unto the children of Israel that they would bring me an offering, and every man that gives it willingly with his heart uh, shall take uh, my offering. And so he says, speak to the people. Tell them that I want them to give. We need an offering. And if you read further on in that chapter, he tells them of what the uh, precious stones, fabric, all kinds of things that he was asking for in the offering, uh, things that were going to be needed for the tabernacle. And as they're doing this, uh, then Moses speaks in verse 8. He says, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So as the people begin to give, they begin to support God's work there, God's house, uh, and doing these things. Uh, and as he, they took this offering, I think it blew Moses away, because it says in Exodus 36, 5 and 6, and he spoke unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service uh, of the work, which the Lord commanded to Make and Moses gave commandment, and he and they caused uh, the, a proclamation to go throughout the camp, saying, uh, "Let neither man nor woman make any more work uh, for the offering of the sanctuary, so that the people were restrained from bringing." Amen. In other words, they were giving so much that God said, "Okay, tell them to stop giving." Amen. Now let me tell you, tonight we're not there. Some of you are saying, I'm ready to stop right now, Pastor. You just say the word, I'll stop. We're not there right now. We're not. We're just at the beginning of the harvesters. Uh, we're looking, amen, at this harvesters. We want to receive from God. Uh, we want the pastors. We want the delegates. We want everyone to be able to be refreshed. Sent back with energy and dominion and power in their lives uh, to continue the work that they are involved in. And part of that is investing in the things of God, investing in what we're doing. If, as we are able to give into this offering tonight, we start, we have two more offerings tomorrow night and Friday night to pay for the conference. And as we do that, as God would speak into our hearts, uh, God can help us. Because what we're doing is we're not investing in the building we're investing in people. We're investing in souls. Amen. Exciting to hear, Pastor Luis, there are men already rising up to send more workers. We need to uh, challenge our men. We need to challenge our folks, challenge ourselves in these areas. There was a pastor who one time stood before his congregation. And he said, I have bad news and I have good news and then I have more bad news. Congregation got quiet. The bad news is the church needs a new roof. The pastor said the congregation groaned. The good news is, is that we have more than enough money for a new roof. 
Oh, a sigh of relief came from all the people as they were gathered together. He says, but the bad news is that it's still in your pocket. I modified this a little bit. And I come to you tonight and says, we have a little bit of bad news and we have some good news and then we have some bad news. Tonight, we need to pay for this conference. The good news is that there's more than enough money to pay for it. But the bad news is that it's still in your pockets. So I want to encourage you tonight to give, to invest. And I want to tell you, we are part of a fellowship that is a very liberal fellowship. We invest in people. We invested in couples to come to this conference. Uh, amen. Whether the their sponsor, whether their uh, ch- uh, church that they come from, are, even if they're not able to pay for their uh, 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 couples, uh, we we will cover that because we want them here. We want them to receive what God is doing, and so we're going to receive an offering tonight if the ushers would come. Tonight, if you're paying cash or a check, if you're putting it in a tithe envelope or you're writing a check, amen, your check will already have your full name and everything. If you're putting it in a tithe envelope, please put your whole name on there. If you just put one, then we're just going to put it in there as an offering. You know how many Juans are around? We're in South Texas, folks. You can't just say, oh, they, they know me already. They already know me. Amen. Yeah, but we don't know your writing. So if you could please write, amen, your first name, last name, amen, even the church that you're from, that would be a great help. If you're giving electronically, we, give, we uh, function through Zelle. And so please, amen, uh, uh, if you do that, amen, it has the phone number up there. And if you can, put on the memo if you're giving towards a conference or if you're giving, if you're giving your tithe, make sure you put down tithe. If you, if you don't come to our church, this church, you don't give your tithe here. You give your tithe in your mother church. And so be sure to do that. Amen. And so if you can, please put your first, last name. Amen. If you want a receipt, then put down your address uh, in that. That would be really good. And the girls in the office won't pull their hair out. Amen. uh, When they're trying to write everything down in that. Amen. So we want to pray for the offering tonight. Ask God he would bless that. Amen. If our brother would pray for the offering tonight. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for everything you are done in our finances, Father God. We ask you to as we give unto your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory he shall give his angels charge over thee jehovah jireh cares for me for me for me jehovah jireh cares for me jehovah jireh my provider his grace is sufficient for me for me for me jehovah jireh my provider his grace is sufficient for me my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory he shall give his angels charge over thee jehovah jireh cares for me for me for me jehovah jireh cares for me jehovah jireh my provider his grace is sufficient for me for me for me jehovah jireh my provider his grace is sufficient for me my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory he shall give his angels charge over thee jehovah jireh cares for me for me for me jehovah jireh cares for me praise god amen
now that we're not going to be clapping and singing, amen, hopefully it'll start getting a little bit cooler for us, uh, <laughs> hallelujah, amen, and uh, just again, want to encourage you, uh, if you can join us for the seminars tomorrow and Friday morning and Saturday morning, uh, just a great lineup. We have some flyers there on the back, uh, and uh, I know God is going to help us. Amen. In the morning, we have Pastor Daniel Alfaro, Pastor Joseph Castro, and Pastor Luis Perez, uh, and Pastor Lamont Melrose, that he'll be with us tomorrow from Houston. Amen. Other than that, uh, praise God, we're on our way. Hallelujah. You have your Bibles. In your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy 11. I want to use our text of our conference. And as I use our text of our conference here, amen, uh, we know that God, through the Word of God, has given us many, many promises. He's given us uh, uh, just the, amen, the uh, 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 in the word of God that God has helped us. And one of the promises that God has said that he has given us uh, is that he has given us dominion. This is even from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 1, uh, when he's creating the world, he's creating the animals, the plants, the earth, everything. And then finally, he creates man. As he creates man, then he tells them, and God blessed them, and he said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, uh, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moves uh, upon the the earth. In other words, this is before the fall. This is before there's any sin, before there's anything that has happened. God still wanted man to have dominion on the earth. And so we see that this is one of the promises. And this is what I want to focus on tonight. Is, is, uh, what, if we're going to see what God wants to do, we're going to have to link our lives uh, to God's dominion and fruitfulness. Because when we take dominion, when we have dominion and we establish that, then we'll begin to see fruitfulness uh, that will begin to come out of that. And so in that, I want to read just the two verses of Scripture, Deuteronomy 11, 23 through 24. And it says, Then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you, and you will be dis, uh, 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 dis, uh, possess, uh, possess greater and mightier nations than yourselves. Every place in which your sole of your foot shall tread shall be yours, and from the wilderness uh, and Lebanon and the river and river Euphrates, uh, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight, we ask you that you would move in our service, that you would move upon this word, God, that you would speak into our lives, that you would bring just, God, uh, an excitement, that you would bring a dominion, that you would release into our lives, into our ministries, uh, God, into our churches. We ask you to do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to minister tonight a message simply said, just wherever your feet shall tread, wherever your feet shall tread. Amen. So let's look first of all at taking dominion or taking possession over our inheritance. There is an inheritance that God has for his people. There is an inheritance that God has for his church. And, uh, you know, uh, have you ever been doing something and, man, you just do it over and over and over and you just find yourself going through the motions? There's nothing worse than just going through the motions where there's no motivation, there's no energy, there's no uh, uh, excitement, uh, and, and, and we're just going through the motions. And we understand uh, the, as people, this could be us. So easily, amen. How many times on your job, maybe on your job, you find yourself and you're just like, man, maybe I need to find me another job, man. But we understand and say, you know, you know what? 
I just need to re-motivate myself, find myself in a place again where I'm excited about what God's doing. Here's Moses. He's given Israel some last instructions before he dies. The whole book of Deuteronomy is just a reminder of what has been going on in the last 40 years uh, from the time he went and spoke to Pharaoh until the end of the 40 years. And they're getting ready uh, to go into the promised land. We know Moses is not going to go in, but he wanted uh, to give them one last speaking. He wanted to remind them about the promises he wanted to give them some last instructions. He wanted to remind them uh, from where they came from and to show them where they're going. Because how many know we're going somewhere? We're, we're, we're not just, amen, going to just, uh, uh, you know, God doesn't just want us to go through the motions. He's taking us somewhere. So they're wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. He tells him, he, he reminds them of everything God has helped them. He gave them water out of a rock. He gave them food from heaven. He brought meat, amen, with a gush of wind enough to feed. They believed that there was almost 6 million Israelites that came out of Egypt. Now, can you imagine trying to feed 6 million, much less, you know, us feeding 6 But yet God was just a breath, was able to send enough to feed them all, to take care of them until they come to the place when they're getting ready to enter into the promised land. He's telling them that he wants them to make a choice. He says that I want you to continue to follow in the steps uh, and the instructions uh, that God has given us. Uh, he said, because it is through this that we're going to have dominion. Because a lot of folks, many times, don't have any dominion in their lives. So as he's speaking to them, he wants them to have dominion. He wants them to be fruitful. In all of these things. And so they're getting ready to go into the promised land. He's telling them, look, it's not going to be a walk in the park. Amen. You're still going to have to fight. You're going to have to battle. We're going to kick. I know I'm going to go in. The, uh, already the hearts of all the nations are trembling because you're coming. They're afraid. They've heard of what I did in Egypt. They have heard the things that I've done in the wilderness. And now you're getting ready to cross over. They know you're coming. God says, I'm already preparing them so you can drive them out. Because he promised them that wherever your feet shall tread, that territory is yours. See, when we plant churches, we send you into a territory, not just to find a building, not just to find a job, not to, we send you into a place to establish dominion. We send you into that place for the purpose of, God, we want souls. We want to see people saved. We want to see conversions. We want to see miracles. Luke 10, verse 19 says, Behold, I give you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In other words, God says, uh, Hey, you're, there's going to be scorpions. There's going to be enemy. There's going to be, but you're going to be able to tread upon them. And establish dominion. Telling them they're going to have to fight. They're going to have to conquer. So that they can establish. The way you establish is by going there. I mean, how many know you begin to start to establish dominion by going forward. By stepping. By walking. 
This is why he's telling them, wherever your feet shall tread. How I many know he's not, he's not going to give us dominion sitting on our couch at home? Oh, God, give us dominion. God, give us dominion. God, give us dominion. Uh, let's play some games. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, I don't know why I don't have any dominion. I don't know why the thing just, you know. You have to be moving forward when God brings deliverance. This is where we begin to establish some dominion. This is why so many Christians have fallen and slipped into temptation or into sin. Because many times they don't get dominion in their life. Here it is. God has delivered us. When we got saved, God brought deliverance. But once God has brought deliverance into our life, then we have to establish dominion. Dominion is not stagnant. It's not just standing still. It's moving forward. This is how we do this. Moses is telling them that they're going to have dominion, but it's going to be purchased by a life that is submitted to God. He says, you're going to go into the promised land. Those that had doubt, those that rebelled, those that didn't have faith in God, they were the ones that said, no, God can't do this. There's giants in the land. We can't, amen, we know the bad, evil report. And they died in the wilderness. Now God's taking a people and he's trying to stir faith inside of their hearts. Going to enter the land of milk and honey. Chapter 11, when you read the whole chapter, he's telling them about being obedient. He's telling them about the goodness that God showed them when they were in Egypt, uh, showed them the opening and going through the Red Sea, how he helped them in the wilderness, verse 6, and then how he dealt with rebellion, uh, and then he shows his mercy. And as you read that whole chapter, I mean, Moses is just showing them, look how God is helping you. To establish dominion. And then he tells them. Tell your children. Speak it in their ears. God. Is going to move. God. Is going to bring dominion. God is going to help us. God, he says. Shh, tell them of what I've done. In people's lives. He says, because I've given you the land as a possession. And the enemy is not going to be able to withstand you. And then after the verses that we just read in 23 and 24. Then he tells them. He gives them a choice. And he says, now I'm telling you. I'm placing in front of you life and death. Blessing or curse. Now choose. He says, now choose. Which one do you want? I think you'd have to be crazy. Well, go ahead and curse me, God. Of course, we want blessing. Of course, we want life. And they, of course, they made a decision. They wanted life. They wanted the blessing of God. Let me tell you, the devil is no match for, the, for God. The devil is no match. A lot of times, you know, we see all kinds of different things. We read different uh, 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 stories and stuff like that. And they always want to picture the devil and God pretty equal, pretty even. It's not even close. It's not even close. So we have to remember, and I believe, amen, especially if you're pioneering, if you're out in the field, uh, or you're going to want to go out in the field, or you're a Bible study leader in your home church, uh, or you're in charge of a ministry, or whatever it is, uh, God has sent us on a mission. Amen. This is not just a little club, amen, I'm just in charge of a little few folks, and we just, it's a mission to save souls, to reach the lost. Because this is what it's about. When we go into a city, when we go out, amen, it's, we're not sent out on a vacation. 
We're not sent out on a sabbatical. We're not just sent out on some uh, uh, adventure. We're sent on a mission to reach the lost. To reach the lost. That's what it's all about. Because in the end, all God gets is us. And He wants the most of us that we can get. He wants to take us. Amen. He wants to take as many as He can. Because there's lots of souls that need saving. There's lots of souls that need deliverance. Lots of souls that need dominion in their life. If you have not read the book by Pastor Campbell and Pastor Gooding, Amen, from deliverance to dominion, that's a must read. Especially if you're thinking of pastoring someday, you need to read that. If you're a pastor, you should have already read that. This will give you insight. This will give you direction. Uh, because a lot of times we can get delivered, uh, but we haven't established dominion. But why do I keep falling? Why do I keep it? And, and maybe because you haven't established dominion. Pastor Campbell said that whenever or wherever you surrender to God in your life, then dominion can be established. We want dominion. God says, you're going to have to surrender to me. See, sometimes it, it's hard for us to surrender because, man, maybe we got a good job. Maybe we got some money. Maybe we got some things. And, and we we're, we're, we're really don't feel that urgent. We forget. Wait a minute. There's a reason why you were sent there. You were sent there on a mission to win souls. To win souls. It's not the land. It's not the buildings, it's people. Right. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry as we have received mercy and we faint not. God says, as we have received this ministry. It's almost like God's telling us, just like Moses was telling Israel, it's time. It's time to take some things seriously in your life. Whether you're a pastor, or whether you're a leader in the church, or whether you're just a disciple in the church. Sometimes we need to stop playing games and we need to get serious about discipleship. Get serious about discipleship. Some of you guys, amen, you, you, you've been saved a while already, but you're still not in that place of being a disciple. Because you haven't surrendered. And then you wonder why you don't have dominion. Because you haven't surrendered yet. You haven't said, God, here's a blank piece of paper. I'm signing it. Here. You fill it in, what you want from my life. Oh, that's hard, Pastor. God really wants that much from me? He wants it all. He wants it all. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> but God said, wherever your feet should dwell. Let's look secondly and quickly. The devil is under our feet. God says that he will put the devil under our feet. When we come and we begin to look at these things. Because we're involved in spiritual warfare. When it says that wherever our feet shall tread. That means when we go, what, whatever comes against us, God says, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you dominion. There was a custom in the Old Testament that when one nation would beat another nation in a war or in a battle, and they would conquer and get the leaders. And as they would get these leaders, uh, they would get them. And then they would uh, have a, 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 a meeting or a powwow or whatever it is to celebrate. And they would bring these men, these kings or princes or whoever they are. And then they would lay them on the ground. And then he would speak to the leaders. And he says, go and put your feet on their neck. 
Well, that, that's kind of mean. Oh, they're going to kill him, <laughs> you know. But the, that was a sign of dominion. Wherever the sole of your foot. In other words, we've taken their land and God has given it to us. Now, we understand we're not talking about physical land. We're talking about souls. We want souls. We want to see people saved. And so when this would happen, it's showing that the enemy will ultimately be defeated, then God will help us. This is why we outreach. This is why we witness. This is why we have church services three times a week. This is why we do these things, because it is through these things. These are the avenues, not only for souls to be saved, but it's also for establishing dominion. Because we're taking the land. This is why we street preach. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people say, well, we don't really get a whole bunch of people saved. We don't really, during the street preaching and stuff like that. But the thing is, is that we're establishing dominion. What we're saying is we're claiming this territory for God. Yeah. And by the way, we do see people saved during street preaching. Hallelujah. So when we look at this, we're establishing, amen, because sometimes we forget it's a spiritual battle. Sometimes we forget, and, and, and we're working on our own energy. We're working on our own uh, uh, abilities. We're working on our own talents. We're working on our own, and, and, and sometimes we start getting burnt out, and we start, it just starts get wearing on us uh, because we're trying to do it ourselves. We're forgetting that it's spiritual. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Amen. I like what it says. Be strong in the Lord. Some of us, the Lord, amen. I haven't talked to him in a while. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against rulers of darkness in this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the things we need to be praying against. These are the things that we need to be binding. These are the things where we need to let our foot, our feet tread upon these things. When the devil takes someone and they backslide, amen, you know what? It says, devil, I'm going to go after more. We can't just, oh, well, oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> no, it, it ought to energize us to do more. Because we understand all the things that we do, these things need to be done. We need to outreach. We need to do concerts and street preaching and revivals, services. We're establishing a venue. We're doing all of these things. But it's a spiritual battle. We have to ask ourselves, man, am, 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 I, am I involved in the spiritual battle? And again, you probably heard sermon after sermon after sermon, amen. But your strongest weapon is your prayer life. You're going to have to take dominion in your prayer life. If there's assaults coming against your marriage, if there's assaults that are coming against your kids, uh, if there's assaults coming against your church, uh, if there's assaults coming against your job and your finances, if there's assaults that are coming against your, uh, 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 in the Pioneer Church or in the church that you're in, you need to bombard heaven. You need to take dominion in prayer. Ephesians 1, 21 through 23, For above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath, he has put all things under his feet and given him to be the head over all things to the church, which in 
which is in his body and the fullness of him that fills in all things. In other words, Christ has been given all authority. Everything has been put under his feet. And he says he is the head of the church, which is us. We have that power available to us. Psalms 91 verse 13. For thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. Thou shalt trample under feet. Here's Jesus. He wants us to have dominion. And you know where your dominion in Christ comes? It comes through your relationship with Christ. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, then it's going to be hard for you to have dominion in your life. And it's in obedience. Again, too many times we try to do it under our own power instead of asking God to give us dominion. James 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, a lot of us, amen, we look at that and we just say there, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And we, we say that all the time, man, I resist you, devil. I got, but we forget the part about submitting unto God. <laughs> oh, yes, God, I, I, <laughs> I, I forgot. No wonder the devil doesn't leave because I'm not doing it in your name. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, why am I here? Where you're at, whether your marriage, whether your ministry, whether your walk with God or whatever, you need to ask yourself, why am I here? Because I'll tell you, the devil's going to try to exploit all your weaknesses. He's going to tell you why you're so inadequate. He's going to tell you why you don't have what it takes to do what needs to be done. Because I'll tell you, if that was true, I wouldn't be here. And believe it or not, if I wouldn't have come to San Antonio, you wouldn't be here either. It blows me away. I was talking with some of the men this morning in prayer as we were talking about that, what God had done. The, the processes, uh, the decisions that were made uh, and, and, and just thinking about this stuff. We don't, we don't even realize the impact that we make. Because how many know? How many know? I am not the most dynamic person around. I am not Mr. Personality. I do not function on eight cylinders. You ever heard of an eight cylinder that runs really nice? Mm, ah, man, the exhaust. It just, it just sounds good. Sounds strong. Not these rice burners. <laughs> I'm talking about just a good old 302. Amen, boss. It just sounds strong. That's not me. <laughs> Amen. I'm a little pinto with a four-cylinder. Amen. Going uphill, I have to put my foot out and push. Amen. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. It, 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 it blows me away. It blows me away. It blows my mind away what God has done in our churches. It, uh, you know, when we were sent to San Antonio, we were sent here to start a church. Not, not for me to work a job, although you need to get a job to pay the rent. Yeah. Didn't send me here, amen, because San Antonio has all these spectacular sightseeing places, and Houston is right there, Dallas is right there, the coast is right there. Yes, we get to enjoy those things. But when we came to San Antonio, me and my wife, we, were, we, we came on a mission. We came to start a church. When we got here, we're witnessing to our neighbors. 
We're getting some of them saved. This is way, this is before we even got a building, before we even started looking for a building. Because we understand God's looking for people. And if we're going to establish dominion, you start, domi start establishing dominion where you're at. Because as soon as we settled in, we got a place to live, I got a job, got all these things in order, amen, we, 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 just, we just got started. We told pastor, it says, hey, you know, we're looking for buildings. He go, oh, no, no, not, not yet, not yet. Because they didn't have finances to do it yet. But you know how disciples are. We kept looking for buildings. Because we're believing God. Amen. Found this building on Cross Creek Road. We saw that building and we're like, you know what? I like this building. Remember laying hands on it? God, we claim this building. If this is where you want us to be, if this is what you want, amen, we claim this. So when finally pastors gave us the okay to start looking for a building, amen, got a hold of the landlord, asked him, he said he wanted 2000 a month. And I said, no, I'm only going to give you 800 Okay. <laughs> and we stayed at 800 for the next, I think, three, four, five years. Because he kept wanting to raise the rent. And I, I told I tell you, well, this is what we're going to do. We'll pay you 800 the first year, 900 the second year, 1,000 the third year. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Comes the end of the three years. And he goes, okay, you know, so we're going to go from 1,100. I go, no, 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 we're going to start over. 800, <laughs> 900, and 1,000. <laughs> and the thing is, God gave us favor. God gave, amen. And, and then we got the space next to us. Then we got, we're starting to grow. We're starting to see people. Uh, and, and then God opens this place, amen. And now this place is starting to get too small. But the thing is, your mind has to be on the mission. Now, of course, you don't neglect family. You don't neglect your kids. You don't neglect your wife or your husband. You don't. Amen. That, that's a part of establishing dominion. There's got to be a balance in that. But you have to remember, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Because there's times me and my wife had thought about that. Why am I, why are we doing this? I could be back in Santa Fe working at the Ford dealership there, making lots of money, amen. And, and, I, and I don't have to deal with problems. Because where there's people, there's problems. But it's saying Proverbs, amen. If the stall is clean, that means there's no ox. And if there's an ox, there's going to be poo. <laughs> now, if you're getting too much poo, then something's wrong, amen. But there's a balance in the two, obviously. Let me hurry here. When we came into town, we, like we said, you know, we started just claiming people. Everywhere we went, you know, we had flyers all the time. We had flyers with us. We're always inviting people to church, always trying to witness to people, always trying to do this. I remember going to the Raybon apartments over here off of Eisenhower and Raybon. We would go in there, me and my wife. At the time, it's just me and my wife. We had some people saved, but they hadn't caught it yet. So I remember going to the Raybon apartments, and we go there, and it would take me and my wife about two and a half days to outreach that whole apartment complex. But we were there, we had our little one in stroller, and then the other one running along playing with us, and, just, and we're going door to door. Now we do an outreach, we do the Raybon apartments, and we're done in 10 minutes. <laughs> That's dominion. That's dominion. But the thing is, that we're like, oh, two and a half days, oh, I don't know, you know, and this weather, and this heat. But we go to SeaWorld in this heat. We don't go. <laughs> we go to the coast in this heat. 
Oh, Pastor, it's so hot here in Outreach. It's just, uh, 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 hey, uh, oh, well, we're, we're going to go over to, uh, uh, you know, uh, Fiesta, Texas right after this. Oh, all right, let's go. Where are we going to Outreach? <laughs> Motivates us. Amen. <laughs> Getting up for prayer in the morning. Oh, that pillow demon is just powerful sometimes. <laughs> Gosh, amen. Pastor, I don't know why I don't have dominion. <sighs> But if we're going fishing, seven o'clock, no, 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 we're going to go fishing four o'clock, four o'clock. <laughs> Let me move on here. I'm starting to meddle. Amen. In our scripture, it says that the foot, a foot is a symbol of power. In the ancient Near East, this was a symbol of power. It meant uh, the power to conquer and to have dominion. The word place means a standing spot or a location, a place, a, ter a territory. And the word tread uh, means to walk uh, or to dwell amongst the enemy. When we go into another city to pioneer, we go into an apartment complex, we're going into the enemy's territory. And as we tread in that place, we claim dominion. Because we live amongst the enemy. Because see, I'll tell you, if we don't influence them, they're going to influence us. Lot in the Old Testament in Sodom. If he would have established dominion, he would have never succumbed to a lot of the things that happened in Sodom. So you need to be careful with the world that we live in today. I'm talking about TV, media, movies, sports, music. They start to become our idols. And when we fall into idolatry, this is what happened so many times with Israel. They fell into idolatry. And then they lost dominion. 2 Corinthians 6, 16 and 17. For what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, and says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, so that I may receive you. I want to look lastly, I already went along here, amen. Do you want dominion? Do you want dominion? What determines if we have dominion? It starts in your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's where it starts. You need to establish your relationship with God. You need to establish prayer every day. You need to establish reading your word every day. You need to establish, amen, going to church when the doors are open, if you're able. You need, you, you need to do those things. This is what determines dominion in our, in our life. If we're going to be saved, we might as well be saved 100%. Having a life with Christ. Joe Campbell said this in his book. He says, when we lack dominion, we are vulnerable to the demonic seductions and distractions. Job 23, 10 and 11. Yet he knows the way that I have taken and he has tested me, and I have come forth as gold. My feet have followed his tracks, and I have kept his ways without turning aside. We can look at Paul. We can look at the disciples. We can look at Peter. We can look at all these. They became world changers because of their relationship with Christ. And they made an impact in, people, in other people's worlds. 2 Corinthians 5, 6, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, and, and God has given us this power. We know who we are. We know who we are. We know where we came from. And sometimes you have to be careful. When the devil comes and he starts uh, accusing you, hey, look at this and look at it. You just look at him and say, you're right. That, that was me. That's right. But God lives in here now. 
I have a relationship with God now. And he's given me dominion over you. God will get involved in your life. God will get involved in your ministry. If you're going to accomplish anything for God, you got to have him involved in your life personally. So he will be involved in your ministry. Sometimes you just have to say, that's enough. I'm tired of fruitfulness. I'm tired of the devil kicking me around. I am tired. And you just need to put your foot down on his head. (laughs) On his head. We have to just tell ourselves, you know what? This is unacceptable. We need to ask ourselves, okay, why is nothing happening? I need to find out why is nothing happening. And then you ask God. Say, God, what's going on? We need to ask ourselves, why? What do I need to do? What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to... Maybe I need to do something different. But get a hold of God. God says he's waiting until all the enemies are made his footstool. And it's by our faith in him that he helps us and he moves in our life. Never stop moving your feet and treading the ground. Time to put your foot down, whether it's in your personal life, your family, your ministry, your relationship with God, your church, whatever it is, we need time to put our foot down. I want everybody's head bowed and eyes closed. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Before anything else, maybe you're here this evening. You were invited to the conference. You are invited to the service tonight. And as you're here, you're not a believer. You're not a Christian. You don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you'd be in this place just like I did when I first heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was 18 years old, 17 years old. And when I responded to the gospel and I admitted that I knew I was a sinner, I knew that I was not right with God, but I needed to get right with God. That moment I made that choice, I made that decision, my life began to go in the right direction. God began to help me to begin to establish dominion. He began to help me to overcome things in my life that I couldn't overcome by myself. So if you're here and you're not saved, but you'd like to give your life to Christ as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, or maybe you're a backslider, you're not right with God, you'd lift your hand right where you're at. Say, Pastor Ben, I see that hand. And the others, amen, I see that hand. God bless you. You can put it down. How many others? How many others? I see that hand. God bless you. Is there anybody else? Is there anyone else? You're not a Christian. You're not born again, but you'd like to give your life to God this evening. I'm not asking you to join a church. Church membership doesn't save you. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you, would you raise your hand? We would love to pray with you. Okay, as our heads are still bowed, eyes are closed. If you lifted your hand, amen, would you look at me real quick? Did you mean that there in the back? I know you did, amen. Did you mean that? I know you did. There was someone else over here. Amen. Lift your hand so I can see your hand. If you really meant that, would you get up from your seat? Would you come meet me here at the front? Somebody's going to come with you. Somebody's going to come with you and pray. Just come. Somebody will come with you. Amen. You won't be alone. There she is. She'll come with you there. God bless you. Amen. We will not embarrass you for anything, okay? Just come. Just kneel there at the end there. She's going to pray with you. God bless you. Amen. I need another one of the other ladies come pray with this young girl right here. Amen. Okay, just come right here. Okay, she's going to pray with you. Okay. As these, amen, our brother, are, okay, okay. Then I want to change the order of the service. I want to speak to the church. 
God wants us to have dominion. And the way that we establish dominion first is your relationship with God is more important and above everything. Next, after that, it's your marriage. It's your relationship with your spouse. Then it's your ministry. And as we establish those things and we take care of those things, God is going to help us establish dominion. We're going to open the altars. We're going to sing a song. God's ministered to your heart. You need to come. You come. Find a place to pray or amen. And, and we just want to believe God. Let's sing tonight. Amen. Glory to you God. Alone That's why we only bow and worship you alone. You alone have risen from the grave. To you alone belongs the power to save. why we only bow and worship you alone. You alone have risen from the grave. To you That's why we only bow and worship you alone. You alone have risen from the grave. To you alone belongs the power to save. Oh, let's just give God praise tonight. Oh, Lord God. Oh, la, 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 ra, ba, 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 ria. Hey, la, 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 la,
that I could bring about a, a victory for them that kept them in the wilderness for 40 years, says the Lord. Yea, I command you today, know this day that I have brought a deliverance, and I have equipped you to take the land, says the Lord. For know this, that I desire to accelerate the work that I am doing, even upon this branch, says the Lord. Know, O ye men of God, that I have equipped you as you go and take the land, whether it is a city or your job. Know that you are clothed with the gospel of peace, says the Lord, a peace that shall guard you in the midst of demonic assault. For you shall proclaim my word and bring about a revival and know that my peace shall go with you, says the Lord. Oh, let's give him praise. Oh, la, 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 la. Alela, ra, ba, 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 ba. Ele, le, 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 re, be, re. Alela, ra, ba, re, ba, re, ara, sandai. Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss. Amen. If we can, I know there's a lot of people here tonight. Uh, just be careful exiting. Amen. Be sure if you're going to the parking lot, keep a handle on your kids. We don't want to get any of them getting run over. Amen. And getting hit. And so please do that. Uh, the cleaning crew wants to get, uh, uh, get at it. So if you can, please do exit. Amen. Uh, 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 the building that would really help us so we can get ready for the morning. We appreciate your cooperation on that amen and with that note amen we want to just dismiss i know god is going to help us we're in for a great time tomorrow pastor alfaro pastor castro pastor perez and pastor melrose amen it's going to be good let's bow our heads in prayer amen uh, uh pastor alfaro amen if you would dismiss us